finished ballet. It's time to send to my car. Level six. So I just walked up to level six. Got confused about which level I was actually on because I was looking at level six when I parked. Technically I'm on five and a half, so I went a little bit higher than I was supposed to. <sighs> but I feel good for walking all those stairs rather than getting the lift. To be fair, it's not easy to get the lift, it's just practical, but I feel good from walking after ballet and the gym this morning. So that I feel knackered now because we've been doing lots of jumping. So um, let's see if I do have the energy to go to the gym in the morning or if I just want to go on day. So I'll see you when I get home, if anything. See ya. Hi everybody. So just finished another dance pass. On my way back to my car, parked on level five, so it's a good walk. Back up the stairs, I was working at the theatre last night, and I was on like level five or level six, and I'd already hit my 10,000 steps, so I did to get the lift. I have some here. There's a playhouse down there. It's so pretty from up here. Yeah, so uh, lots of jumping again today. I'm gonna go to the gym in the morning. Didn't go this morning because I just thought it might be a bit too much considering the class is getting harder. Hopefully I can sleep. I might feel a bit sore in the morning, but at least I can stretch everything out by having like a bit of a leg day. Um, but yeah, so I'll see you later. Okay guys, at some point I feel like I need to get like a stand or something for my camera so that I can talk to you at a more flattering angle. I think last time I did a driving video like this, I was full of cold and I was very aware of my nostrils throughout the whole thing. So now you can go back and look at my nostrils. Yay! Anyway, that's traffic lights. But yeah, I'm really enjoying ballet and to be honest, um, I think because of my hip issues, I thought I wouldn't enjoy it. I thought it was going to be kind of a thing of figuring out if giving up when I was a kid was the right thing to do. And I guess in a way, I still, I've still got that element of thinking it was the right thing to do for me at the time because to be honest, I wasn't looking after my hips properly. I wasn't wearing my orthotics. But to be fair, I didn't really find out properly until I was 13, so that's why I was struggling in so much pain. Then when I was a teenager and I was given my orthotics, that was my way to rebel. Because like, my sister went and got drunk when she was like the underage. I dyed my hair and then when I was told I needed orthotics to fix my hip problems I was just like no I don't want to wear those I'm going to wear ballet flats <laughs> I'm going to wear shoes which are the worst shoes for me to wear as a person with these hip issues maybe at some point I'll do a video explaining my hip issues basically what I've got is an apparent leg length discrepancy. A true leg discrepancy is basically where from hip to the bottom of the foot um, you've got irregular lengths on either side so one leg will be one length and the other leg will be another length. For me when you measure from hip to foot it's the same length but one of my hips is actually higher than the other and you can see it when I'm not wearing my orthotics and you can see like my back properly. You can see where my hips are and it's fairly obvious, which is just a little bit annoying. I used to be really kind of embarrassed about it and I was very insecure about it and I didn't like wearing things that showed it off. And I even went through a phase when I was a teenager where I hated wearing jeans because I felt like it made it more apparent. I've only just realized why I did it recently because I was just like, why did I have such an aversion to jeans? Why did I hate them so much? And now when I think about it, it was no way, no, when I wore jeans, especially in the early noughties, where it was kind of low-rise jeans, was just the in thing. And I was just very aware that you could really see my hips when I was wearing jeans. So I went into like high-waisted, wearing 
anything that could cover up that area so that it wasn't on show. That was how insecure I was about it. Actually, what I did want to say actually, oh, sorry, I just had to slow down because somebody was pulling into a driveway. One thing I did want to mention actually, because um, the pianist, the piano player for our um, ballet class, David, he's been uh, picking it up a bit and he's been playing a bit of Disney and it got me excited <laughs> during the last time. And I was just like, hang on a second, this is Disney. And I was there going, I know you. I walked with you once upon a dream and I was thinking that maybe at some point I might sing something on this channel that kind of shows off my opera chops because I mean that's is where I started oh what is this guy behind me doing but yeah at some point I might do some singing for you and show off kind of my opera training because you know that was where I started my first ever singing teacher was an opera singer and she turned me into an opera singer basically she taught me how to kind of really reach those re use a diaphragm to kind of reach those high notes and that's how I she basically turned me into a top soprano which I was never initially comfortable with so I was always like oh I'm more of kind of like a mezzo soprano and sometimes you know I still gear more towards the mezzo but actually when I'm properly warmed up I am a soprano, let's face it. I can't, I can't get away from the fact that I am a soprano. Singing teacher took me on when I was, what, 14, I wanna say? It would've been 13, I was, would've been about 13, 14 when I met her. And um, through that, she took me on and says, like, I, you know, because I remember asking her if she did private lessons, she was just like, oh, I can give you classical. And she took me straight in, I'm at grade five, um, classical, which amazingly I passed, which was incredible to me because I wasn't expecting to pass my um, grade five classical because I felt like I'd be thrown in at the deep end. In the middle of the exam, I actually lost myself on one of my songs, which was a cappella, And so I stopped, went over and to the piano, just played middle C, and then somehow brought it back. I've no idea how I did. But yeah, I just literally just stopped in kind of in the middle of the song. I said sorry. Went over to the piano, played middle C. And yeah, I just managed to bring it back and I passed. Um when I think of that what of that moment when I was my brain just stopped working and I just thought I just need to play a note on this piano just to bring it back. And I literally just played middle C. That's all I did, I just played middle C. Um, yeah, it worked, I passed it. And then my singing teacher then put me into something a bit more comfortable and put me into musical theatre for my grade six, um, which is where I've kind of stayed ever since. But I do still have that initial opera training, which has never left me. So at some point I will sing a song that kind of shows that off for you. And I think something like um, the uh, Dream Award song, might be a good way to do it. I'm coming up to the main road and like the roundabouts and everything so I will leave you right there but at some point I probably will kind of sort out this ballet diaries and figure out what the hell I'm doing with it yay so I'm gonna say bye now yeah don't forget to subscribe um, I'm Debbie Drama upload every single Wednesday click on those little bell notifications if you want to see when I am uploading thanks for watching Help me uh, reach my uh, 100 subscriber goals. I will get a custom URL if I reach 100 subscribers. So yeah, come on. Be one of the 100 and help me get there please because I feel like that gives me a goal in a way to start off with. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. I know you, I walked with you once upon a dream. I know you, a gleam in your eyes is so familiar, a gleam. I did forget to breathe there, by the way. <laughs>